Melissa Orange here, and you know this guy, Jan Froholt. It is a big week for you. You've got, I don't know, something called the NFL Draft coming up. How are you preparing yourself heading into the weekend? Um, just trying to stay open-minded. You know, uh, I spoke a little with Frank, and, uh, you know, I've been having not anxiety, but, you know, you're thinking about where you should land and what should happen. And, and, and the main thing he just said is, hey, dude, just relax. It's going to... No matter where you're going to end up, it's going to be a good situation for you and your, your life's going to change and be excited about it, be happy. Uh, it doesn't matter what round and all that. Um, so just, you know, focus on the happiness and, and the change and embrace it. That's easy for Frank to say. He got a call day one and yeah, he he got, <laughs> it was pretty easy for yeah. Frank. <laughs> he didn't really have to wait that long. He no. did not. No. Did, so is there any kind of like, like yoga, meditation, and any way for you to kind of relax and not think about it? Um... I mean, I go, I lift every morning, mm -hmm. uh, I go walk my dogs, I mean, I just have a decent routine, I don't do too much, I think just staying down to earth and just preparing myself for minicamp and, and what's going to happen in, uh, in a couple of weeks and, you know, just focus on myself. I love talking to guys about the process because once they've declared for the draft, how they get ready, how they prepare, how they present themselves is always different. How was this process for you and, and your focus as you got ready to prepare to try to be in the NFL? Um, it, was, it, was, it was weird but also kind of fun because for the first time in my whole career, I've just focused on myself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's always been a, it's a team sport and Wherever you go to a team, it's still a team sport, but at the same time, you're also an individual and you represent yourself and uh, you need to focus on yourself and make sure that you're in the right state of mind because it's also a job. So if you don't, mm -hmm. if you're not performing to the what you need to do, you're going to get fired. Um, but it was kind of fun to me to focus on the whole combine prep, you know, learn doing all the whole running stuff, uh, but just focusing on the things I could do, you know, do yoga. Uh, do uh, mental imagery training, uh, strength conditioning, of course, uh, different technique with running, and um, just trying to tone in on being the, the best athlete I could mm -hmm. be. And it was, it, was, it was really fun. And, of course, not really having much school to worry about and not all these other stressors and just focusing on yourself. And that was kind of, uh, it was kind of liberating, mm -hmm. actually. So where is Yelda right now heading into the draft? Personally, like feeling, physically, mentally? Feeling really good. good. Uh, had to come back, gain some weight from combine. Was slimmed down a little bit to be able to run uh, decently. Uh, um, but just, you know, trying to hone in on my diet, gain some more weight. Um, did, i actually been going with one of the assistant strength coaches, uh, mm -hmm. Coach Rhett Brooks, and he's taken me through different conditioning and, and strength. And it's been great. Uh, it's been doing really mm -hmm. well these past seven weeks with him, six weeks. Um, so I'm, 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 I feel really good. Sure. As much as you've focused on that, how much have you been able to maybe reflect on this whole entire football career coming to the United States from Denmark and how everything just unfolded in one domino, the domino effect and everything kept kind of falling in line for you? Um, I mean, I don't think it's going to, I'm going to realize it until yeah. in a couple of days, uh, kind of talking with you guys, talking about everything, and now everyone kind of wanted to go back to the start and sure. talking to all these scouts, like, where'd you grow up and where'd you go to high school and what you play? And it's I've kind of been going down memory lane <laughs> for the past couple of months. Uh, but, you know, it, of course, it is this domino effect. And it might overwhelm me a little bit at times, but at the same time, you know, I'm I'm happy I had, to, uh, had this opportunity and be a part of the Razorback Nation and, um, you know, be a Razorback was, has been an awesome uh, journey for me, even mm -hmm. though we didn't win as many games as we would have liked. Sure. Uh, I, 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 still, I still firmly believe that I, I, I still I know that I would do it again. All right, well, I'm going to take you a little bit back down that memory lane, and I know you Sounds talked about good. it a little bit, but hey, when, you, okay. when you decided to become an exchange student from Denmark, you came over here, got um, placed at Ohio, in Ohio, mm -hmm. um, and I know that you wanted to be at a school with football. Yeah. Um, when you got over here, just your immediate reaction to how much football is such a big deal in high school and in America. Yeah, I mean, I, I was fortunate enough to go to a really, really good high school, Warren G. Harding. Uh, had a really big stadium. I think it could fit five, 6,000, if not more. They might be mad at me now because I'm, I'm selling them. Uh, <laughs> short, selling short a little bit. Yeah, uh, but it was, it was insane. You know, uh -huh. there was 100, there was 80, 85 kids on a team and we had a bunch of coaches and you know I've, I've only been used to very minimal people coming to come in and watch mm -hmm. those guard games maybe a couple hundred at the max uh to hear of just being massive stands and a band and 
we have uh, what those hype on Friday on uh, Thursday pep rallies, hype, pep rallies yeah. and all that. And I was, <laughs> it was just, it was just a lot for me. And then of course coming to Arkansas, it was even, even more intense. Mm -hmm. But it's um, you kind of just get sucked into it because mm -hmm. it's it's hard. Like you don't you you can't really fight it uh, if you want to. But it's it's an awesome experience and. You want to be a part of this whole community because everyone comes, kind of brings everyone together, and uh, it was, it was just an amazing experience. When you were talking with your parents when you were over here, and you're like, "Hey, I've got some D1 schools recruiting me to play football." Yeah. What was that conversation like? Did they truly understand what that meant? No, so they didn't. They didn't really get it uh, to begin with. Um, once I kind of talked to my dad about it, he kind of. It made a little bit more sense to him, and he actually ended up coming over here. We went on a little recruiting trip and visited yeah. um, a couple of schools, including Arkansas. Uh, and then he kind of understood how big it was. Of course, I, I was also kind of new to it. I kind of mm -hmm. understood what it was, but at the same time, just seeing they were just they were just finishing up the Fred W. Smith Center yeah. and. You know, the, the big stadium, the, you have the dining hall, they have everything, everything's included. And you're like, wow, this is this is massive. Sure. Um, and also at all the other schools, and we kind of got a realization of how big of a deal it really was. Um, so that's when we kind of mm -hmm. started going more, okay, well, we can't come back my junior year, so I had to go back to Denmark and mm -hmm. trying to get into a boarding school and making this making sure that this dream would end up coming to fruition. Sure. Well, as a parent, if you just say they want to pay for my school, they're kind of like, okay, that sounds good. Yeah, I mean, in, <laughs> in Denmark, it's a little different uh -huh. since we, you know, school is free and oh. uh, because we're more of a, maybe some people get mad, more of a social socialist democratic point of view. Um, so, I mean, paying for school wasn't really like, that was nothing new. I mean, in not in a, in a sense like of like having an opportunity, yeah, but more, the opportunity was more to be able to play football mm -hmm. at a really really high level and sure. still be able to get a really good education because um, education means a lot for a family. So of course, if it was just football, they might have been like, well, <laughs> what about <laughs> school? Uh, but the combined package, I sure. think, was uh, was something we couldn't pass up. You know, some people might forget that you came in as a defensive lineman, yeah. and you'd only played football for a couple of years at that point since your sophomore year of high school. You come in as a defensive lineman, play that for a year, and then you make that transition yeah. to offensive line. What was that transition like for you? Uh, it was really hard. Uh, it was tough to, you know, run blocking wasn't really a big big deal. I just ran through people kind of like in a defensive lineman, but pass blocking was certainly an issue. Um, you know, and it's just trying to understand the playbook. There's a lot more uh, tangibles to it. There's a lot more what ifs and and a uh, lot more rules. You mm -hmm. know, it was not defensive line in a sense. It's more, it's very easy. Like you either have the A gap, B gap, or what are you doing here? You might, you can maybe go here, but you need to stay in your lane and just you you react from what the what the offensive line is doing. Mm -hmm. Generally, on offensive line, we kind of dictate where you guys go. Of course, if they bring pressure and stuff, there's sure. different things to it. But basically. Sure, sure, sure. Um, but that was, it was hard for me, but it was also intriguing because I feel like it brought my uh, level of intelligence around football to much higher, mm -hmm. um, and it, I enjoyed it. You know, what was the transition like off the field and just getting used to the American way of college life at Arkansas? It was not too bad. I mean, uh, you know, it's, it was always hard being away from family. Um, I had some really good roommates, though, to help me get through mm -hmm. it. Um, but I mean, you know, just regular college student stuff. I'm pretty sure I'd have done the same thing in, in Denmark. <laughs> but you know, having to have balanced that with football and 6 a.m. lifts and stuff like that, so it kind of makes it a little harder. But at the same time, you know, you never grow bored. There's mm -hmm. always stuff to do, and whenever you're done with football, you always want to do something, and you don't have that much time to do it in. So I mean, in the end, like I was never bored in college. Mm -hmm. I always yeah. had a good time. Um, so I guess staying busy was a uh, was a good thing for me. <laughs> Over these past couple of years, where do you think you've grown the most personally that maybe Arkansas and, and the coaches that you were able to work with helped you with? Um, I think um, maybe the, the mental part of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a really hard time with not performing to the level of my own expectations my freshman year as a D lineman. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, I'm going to come in, I'm going to be a, an All American. That was my goal. I, that's what I wanted to be, and of course I wasn't. <laughs> um, and then moving over to O line, I kind of took it as okay, a new challenge, and I might get more playing time, and that's what I wanted to do. And 
still didn't do as well and it was really, really tough for me. Um, but then, you know, um, talking with coaches, with players, and my, my mom, she's also a certified stress and life mm -hmm. coach. Uh, so she helped me a lot too with just like failure is okay and, and dealing with all these things. And I think now I'm, I don't, if I do something bad, it doesn't affect me as much. I take it more if it's a learning experience mm -hmm. instead of beating myself up all the time because I didn't do well enough. How was that? Or, and, or how hard was that with all the other transition that you're going through with coaching changes, position coaching changes, no success really on the field, hmm. and you're over here trying to get better uh, so that you can make, maybe play football professionally? It was tough, um, but in the end, I mean, um, of course, whenever you lose, you always, always want to say you learn a lot from losing, hmm. uh, but I always wanted to win more. But I think going through these trials and tribulations and all these bumps in the road has helped me shape me to the offensive line I am today and the person I am today. Uh, I mean, I don't, I hate losing. Uh, I don't, I don't accept it, mm -hmm. even though we only won six games the past two years. Um, but I mean, um, it made me strive to be even better every day. And I think, you know, with the new coaching change and Coach Morris came in and he did a good job at trying to stay positive with the team, honestly. Um, always striving for better, always striving for more, I keep being positive, and I think in the end that's that's what you got to do because the second you start doubting yourself, the second you start being pissed at yourself, it's the, the whole, everything will fall apart, mm -hmm. even worse. And uh, and I think we, I, I try to stay as, stay to my, my values and my beliefs, and I think that's, in the end, it, it helped me a lot, a little bit, um, even though he lost a lot. Okay, well, we've kind of come full circle now because we're now at the NFL and you're okay. preparing for the NFL. Yeah. When you're selling yourselves to teams, the pitch that you give these teams on why Yelda Froholt should be on the roster. Um, I haven't peaked nearly enough yet. Uh, I mean, I am not a full, the perfect, well-rounded player yet. Uh, I think that I've increased every single year. I've gotten better every single year. The game has slowed down, and I think I'm only going to continue to be better. Um, I think that I'm a valuable pick for some teams. Uh, I might not be the one that they're going to come in and pluck in and play immediately. I have those expectations that I'm going to start immediately. Um, but I think that I'm only going to get better as the years go by. And uh, right now, my, I don't know where my stock is, but if you can get me at a cheap price, you're, you're getting a steal. And, uh, as an, and as an offensive lineman, you've stayed relatively healthy, which helps you as well. I have, yeah. I mean, I've, I've performed well in the field. I'm, I'm healthy. I'm ready to go. And... Uh, you know, I feel I don't really have that. I don't have any off-field issues. Um, was a, a couple of guys called me a choir boy because uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm a little perfect little choir boy. But I mean, uh, I think I'm a really valuable pick if I need mm. to need to be honest. Well, you know, you've got a lot of guys that you can lean on. You mentioned Frank. There's Dan Skipper yeah, also around as well. <laughs> you know, so you've got guys that you can call. Um, but but enjoy the week. You know, enjoy yeah. the process, enjoy the draft, and you're going to have your family here, and mm -hmm. I know that it means a lot to have your family here from overseas. Yes, ma'am, it is. It does mean a lot. All right. Did your dad give you any words of advice heading into? I think he's more he's more anxiety than I have about the freaking <laughs> draft. I mean, he he's like, oh, I'm reading all these things, and I'm slucking up every day. I'm like, he's, he's like, I don't even know what I'm going to do after you get drafted because <laughs> it's like four hours of my day is just going to be cut out. <laughs> um, but... Uh, you know, they're, they're saying the same thing, you know, just, just be happy. We're all going to be happy wherever you end sure. up. Um, and I think the best part is it's going to be a, a bigger airport, so it's not going to be as hard to get into flying, like flying into XNA compared to flying into any other big airport. But uh, that's the only real positive mm -hmm. uh, they don't really care about. But, I mean, they're all excited. Um, it's, I'm happy they're around. It means a lot. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's going to be a good weekend. The whole country of Denmark's excited. You yeah, know, you, there's there's so much yell to hype. They yeah. love it, and of course, you could possibly be the second Danish person drafted, first position player, which is you know kind of a big deal too. Yeah. Any pressure there? No, I feel like honestly, all the Danish people they don't really they're all excited about it. I mean, they're all I'm getting all these texts from people I never I've never met in my life, and <laughs> they're all like, hey man, congratulations on what you've done, and we're we'll following you wherever you go and however you will do, and you know everyone's super excited, and I mean. Uh, I feel I feel a lot of uh, support back home from Denmark. Are you a little celebrity over there? Uh, it's not like I walk through the streets and like, oh, that's Yelda. I mean, we're not, we're not. Football's not that big yet, but we'll we'll see, we'll see. But it would mean a lot, a lot to you. It It'd be would. a big deal to represent your country. Definitely would.
and you know maybe have a career, maybe be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I would be. I mean, we're one for one for Danish <laughs> people. I got drafted, so I have some big shoes to fill, but we'll see. All right. How do you say good luck in Danish? Uh, hello, Luka. What? Hello, Luka. Hello, Luka. Is right. that close? Ugh. Sure. That's, I'll try it. They'll, they'll be okay. Well, we wish you good luck. Thank you very in much. In the draft this I week. I appreciate it. Yelda, thanks for the time. Thank you.